Hey there, in a previous video I mentioned why I thought this Prospects Monster was the best possible watch I could buy for me. And uh, so I figured, let me let me spend a couple of seconds and explain why or how I came to that decision. Um, first of all, I've, I've been down the smartwatch route. Uh, I'm a software developer, been writing software for 30 years, so I gravitate towards technology, first of all. I've had every Apple Watch and every... Um, let's just say the Galaxy watch that has existed. Um, and so I know them very well. I know them very intimately. Um, and and I'm and I like them. Um, my favorite smartwatch uh, is probably here. It is the uh, Garmin Phoenix uh, 6S Pro, something like that. Um, and I, you know, I, I can explain why I think that's the best smartwatch, but anyway. The long and short of it is, um, I've been down the analog watch route. Um, this is the first one I think I had. Uh, it was a gift from uh, my father's company, what, 30 plus years ago. Uh, so um, I, I still believe that this Prospects Monster, the uh, I think it's the D29 or SPD29, is, is the all around best watch. Um, first of all, as far as smart watches go, um, the biggest con that I find from them is that they are distracting as heck. Um, I don't care whether you're in a meeting or on a phone call or just trying to work, having something buzz on your wrist every 30 minutes or every hour to tell you to stand up or wherever the case is, it's just, it's just distracting. And so uh, they are, they are, they're horrible for that perspective. And I, and I shut off my notifications, most of my notifications on, on smart watches um, doesn't matter who makes them. Um, it's a watch. Um, as far as the calling features that some of them have, well, I should say all of them have. You can make a phone call from pretty much all of them. They work fine, but um, and the and the caller can hear you just fine. But y y let's face it, when this thing is hanging by your side and you're walking down the street, you're not you're not going to hear them all that well. So unless you plan on having that watch stuck to your ear. Uh, it, it's just not, it's not a good calling experience. Um, so the smart watches, yeah, they're, you know, they, they have their own animal or they're their own animal. Um, you know, in some of them you get into the situation where, um, like I think it's the, I think it's the, uh, the most recent Apple with the always on display. And, you know, is that screen bright enough for you to see something in normal daylight? Or do you have to turn the screen on to be able to see it clearly? Um, so is it is it bright enough? Do I have to fumble with it to turn on uh, on the display? Um, even with the even with the Galaxy Watch, you're constantly flipping the thing up to trying to get it to turn on um, so that you can see the the clock in the middle of the night or in the daytime. Um, if you're in a movie theater, it's distracting. The bottom line is they're they're just they, they fit a niche, but I don't think they're a good watch. Let's just say. Uh, oh, and charging. I mean, do you know how inconvenient it is? Even when you get something like the Garmin Phoenix, which will last you several days in a single charge, when the time comes that you don't have that charge or you forgot to charge it or it didn't alert you or you missed an alert or whatever, it sucks having your watch discharge in the first half of the day. And let's face it, from that point on, you don't have a watch, um, which may sound trivial, but as you've grown accustomed to having that on your wrist and then all of a sudden to not have it there, uh, or just have a bracelet at that point, it's it's annoying as heck. Um, so I would say they are they're okay for what they do for the electronic side of things, but they're not a good watch, period. End of story. Um, as far as this watch is concerned, I will say it is highly useful. There are no distractions, there's no battery, there's no electronics to worry about. Um, and so it is it is probably the best watch by none, by far. And so let's let's talk about why, right? So let me get it off my wrist because that's that's probably annoying looking at it. First of all, uh, it's useful. It's it, it is it is there when I need it. So when I want to look down at my watch and figure and get some information from it, it's there. I don't have to worry about did the battery discharge or or you know is it is it are the conditions bright enough? It's got the critical information that you use for a watch for your time, your date, your day, um, 
it's 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 illuminated it has built-in loom so i'm going to be able to see it at night um and the diver bezel i know people think that's a gimmick uh that it's only for divers and yes i am a diver um but it is more useful um to your you know day-to-day -day life than just diving and i'll, I'll touch on that in a second um, there's no distractions. So unlike a smartwatch where if you're in a movie theater or if you're in a meeting or whatever, this thing's not going to bother you in the middle of it. The light's not going to go off and disturb other people in the movie theater or whatever. It It's not going to get in your way. It's going to do what it does well and, and it's going to be unobtrusive. Um, charging. There's no charging this. So I know people can say, hey, quartz batteries or battery operated watches, they don't need to be charged either way or other, um, they don't need to be charged, but they do. Those, those batteries still need to be replaced and they will burn out over some time. And if I'm in the middle of the woods somewhere, I don't want my battery to be dead. Um, and you're not going to be alerted when those batteries are, are drained uh, on a quartz watch. So, so batteries are still a concern. Solar, you know, the bottom line is if I leave this watch, if I put it in my drawer or something face down um, and and it is not getting sunlight for a period of time, maybe the weekend or whatever the case is, that battery's dead. And so um, a solar watch isn't, is, isn't foolproof either. Um, I do have a Seiko 5 somewhere running around here. Here it is. Um, yeah, actually, it's not a Seiko 5. It's, I don't know what it is, but it is a solar watch um, and it works great but it is solar and it's one more thing to consider um, that you've got to factor into this. Um, the, uh, the electronics, if you have an electronic watch, again, I've been in technology for 30 years, um, electronics decay over time. They are not impervious to the elements, to humidity, to hot and cold. The electronics in this watch will die at some point uh, or will become problematic or susceptible to the elements. Um, even in a sealed case, it's going to be, uh, it's not gonna last forever. Um, so electronics decay over time. In automatic, you're not gonna run into that problem. It, this charges just by wearing it. So uh, you're, you're not gonna run out of juice and you're not gonna worry about, you know, it, it being uh, the electronics decaying over time or anything like that. I talked about this diver bezel. Um, it is, I think, very misunderstood. Yes, it is great for diving. If I'm doing a, 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 um, a safety stop for 15 minutes, um, I wanna be able to set that, uh, that indicator at the beginning of my 15 minute um, ascent so I know where I started. And, and I think that's probably the, the biggest misconception of, of why that's used. But what the diver bezel does is it marks when you started an activity. And so, give you an example. I used it yesterday when I was painting the deck. Um, I know the paint, or the uh, I was patching some uh, some imperfections in the deck, and I know it needed 30 minutes to be able to cure before I can go on and continue painting it. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna write down the time. I'd rather twist this little bezel to the time that I started that activity and know that when I glance at my watch the next time, if that hand has progressed 30 minutes past, well, I know my that cure time for that silicone or whatever is is done. So that dive bezel is more valuable to people than just being a dive bezel, if you will. Um, the sapphire crystal that's in here, uh, again, a useful feature in my opinion. Um, all of these have some type of covering to cover the face, but a sapphire crystal, um, I think it, they measure on the Mohs scale or something like that, but it has a rating of nine, which is pretty dang hard. So on a mineral crystal or um, even a good quality crystal, you're, go you're going to get scratches. A, a sapphire crystal um, is going to be more scratch resistant and impervious to those to those things that make the watch unpleasant to use. Um, reliability. Uh, reliability is everything with this watch, in my opinion. You know, first off, it, it's got a black ionized or a black um, ion plated uh, outer casing, which, um, yeah, it's aesthetically pleasing, but that black ionization, it does help protect it a, a slight bit from scratches and those other things. So you've got that kind of adding to the equation. Um, I mentioned the timekeeping aspect of it, it's hackable, which essentially means I can, I can synchronize this to a precise time source by stopping that second hand, getting it to the point where um, I want it to be, and then starting the clock again or starting a watch again. So I know that sounds trivial, but for somebody who's anal, like a software developer, having a hackable watch is, is it's a nice feature to have, knowing that it's just that more precise. Um, 
it is a diver watch. So as far as this dropping into the water somewhere, this is impervious to water up to 660 feet or 200 meters. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't dive in 200 feet of water. Um, if I drop this in a puddle or if I, or if I you know, take it into the shower or whatever, I don't have to worry about this. Whereas these other watches, yeah, they may be water resistant or IP rated or whatever, but this bad boy is gonna go diving with me and I don't have to worry about it. Um, I talked about the power, for example. If I choose not to wear this, or if I leave it in a drawer somewhere, or I don't wanna spend $1,000 on a watch winder, this has got 40, I think 41 days of power reserve. And again, you wear it for eight hours, it's fully charged. Um, and, and I would say last but not least, one thing you have to think of, you know, we've got smart watches and everybody's talking about IP this and IP that rated. This has got an ISO rating on it, ISO certification. The ISO certification for, the, for this watch um, is an ISO 6425, which it is, it is primarily meant to be a, I guess, an authentication of a true diver watch. But more importantly, that diver, that certification takes into account two other certifications, ISO 1413, which is for shock resistance, and ISO 6, or 764, which is magnetic resistance. So think about that for a second. The ISO 6425 means that this is impervious to condensation, so moisture is not going to get into the watch. It's not going to affect it. Um, it's resistant to salt and salt water. So obviously it's a no-brainer if, if you're going to be diving in the ocean with it, but that means the corrosive elements that you're going to run into in day-to-day -day life are not going to affect this watch. Um, and so I can leave this submerged in the ocean for a month and know that it's going to work fine um, the minute I pick it up. Um, great if I lose it or misplace it or drop it in the toilet or whatever the case is. I don't have to worry about this watch. Those other two certifications, ISO 1413 shock resistance, if you, if you knew, if, read that spec. That 1413 certification, which, which that parent certification encompasses, means that it is capable of withstanding about 5,000 Gs. 5,000 Gs. That is 5,000 times the force of gravity, essentially. Essentially, what we're talking about is I can hit this with a golf club, and it's going to keep running as smooth as it is right now. That is what a 5,000 G shock resistance means. And that magnetic resistance, again, you may think that that's not a big deal, but you come in contact with magnetic forces all the time. If I'm working on, let's say, the electric panel of my, of my uh, garage or, or in my house, or if I'm working under the hood of my car, or if I'm diving and I brush up against an eel or whatever the case is, the bottom line is this isn't going to be impacted by that, electri that electricity or the magnetic force of it, which also means if I ever use this with a compass, like the compass on a boat or uh, with a lensetic compass or whatever, I don't have to worry about this bad boy interfering. So... I know I've kind of threw a bunch of information out here, but the bottom line is this does what it's designed to do incredibly well. I don't have to worry about it ever um, running out of juice. I don't have to worry about it being destroyed by it being hit on the side of a whatever by a hammer or by a rubbing up against the fence post or whatever the case is. I don't have to worry about the weather getting to it. And as far as the features that it has, it is probably the most useful, all well-rounded timepiece that I think you can have. Again, I've said it in my other videos, the only part of it that I'm not a fan of is this uh, is the bracelet that it comes with. Maybe this is your cup of tea. I don't like the extra weight in it, so I have a NATO strap on it. But other than that, I think this is, this is by far the perfect watch. Again, perfect watch for me, and uh, I hope this explains why. Thanks a bunch.